Hello, my name is John Merrill, and I am the regional engineer for Eagle Bergman in the Charlotte Service Center. And in this session, what I'd like to do is go over uh, some best practices for uh, seal teardown and inspection, primarily for doing uh, seal failure analysis, but this also applies if, uh, if you're just tearing down any seal for repair. There's some best practices uh, that I'm going to recommend here that I think can help you. Uh, what I'm going to do today is just take a typical single cartex. Uh, we're not going to focus so much on failure mechanisms because that's way outside the scope of what we can cover in, in one short uh, session. Primary thing I want to cover today is uh, um, to keep yourself and your coworkers safe. Use the right personal protective equipment or PPE. Uh, preserve any and all of the evidence that comes in with the seal. That's very important. Um, and then I'm going to show you some of the tools and techniques that I use here in Charlotte that are time tested that, uh, uh, that you can take back to your service center or uh, whether you're working on site at a facility or even if you have to do a, uh, a seal tear down and inspection on a customer site. Uh, you can tell them, you know, here's some things I'm going to need, uh, here's some tools and equipment that I'm going to need or some things that you might want to keep in a kit and travel with you. I keep a lot of this stuff and a lot of other tools in a kit. Uh, that I take with me just in case the customer doesn't have those on site. mistake that a lot of people make when they're doing a seal teardown or, or seal failure analysis, particularly if you're on site with the customer, there tends to be a bit of panic and uh, the wrong thing to do is grab a hold of the seal, take it apart, look at the faces and jump to a conclusion. Not only is that not a very good way for establishing a cause, uh, it can also be quite dangerous. It sends a very poor message to the customer. And uh, uh, so what I'm going to do is, is kind of go through some very basic steps that you really have to do with every single SEAL. Uh, a lot of what I teach is don't jump right into it. Start slow and build momentum. You will get done. Uh, you'll, you'll actually get done in less time if you follow some of these protocols because then you don't have to go back and backtrack. So. First two things, before you even, ideally before you even open the box that the seal is in, because the box may contain some residual vapors uh, or debris, dust, or something that you may not have signed up for just yet. You might not have the PPE on uh, to handle that. So ideally, you want to do this before you even open the box. First thing, MSDS sheet. You have to know what the seal has been exposed to. Uh, before, before you know what personal protective equipment to use. And PPE is, is normally listed on, on all MSDS sheets. Now, this can get a little bit fuzzy because uh, a lot of times customers will have decontaminated the seal themselves. And uh, when that happens, uh, they, they have uh, essentially rendered a lot of the MSDS sheets from the service conditions irrelevant. A lot of times the chemicals that they use uh, to, to clean or decontaminate the seals can be hazardous in themselves, whether it's caustic, bleach, even acids in some cases. Uh, some chemicals become more highly concentrated if they're allowed to dry. Uh, so it's best to know what chemicals has this seal been exposed to. That may or may not be the same as what it was exposed to in service. So make sure you have all the MSDS sheets available. I've seen a lot of engineers have the MSDS sheets right there, but what do they do? They forget to read the MSDS sheets. Now, that doesn't have, mean you have to spend all your time, but you should at least be familiar with some of the key sections, the name of the chemical, um, and then it will list uh, hazards. It will also list personal, personal protective equipment, uh, PPE, that you might need to handle that, uh, that, that chemical safely. Um, now, one thing that I do Second thing is you need to know uh, not only what chemicals was the seal exposed to, but what thermodynamic and mechanical stressors was the seal exposed to. My favorite data sheet, SIS, the seal information sheet. You need to have one of these completed before you start. Uh, one, when you look at the SIS sheet, what's the first thing you need to do? Is, are the chemicals and process fluids listed? Do you have all those MSDS sheets? Okay. If they don't match up, you might want to just stop everything and, and ask the customer, do I have the right seal? Uh, I have conflicting information, and I don't want to start until I understand 
You know, did you send me the right seal? Is this the seal that we think it is? That sort of thing. The second things you want to look at are, you know, the basic application information, uh, pressures, speeds, temperatures, because you want those in the back of your mind as you're looking at the seal. If the seal ran at very high speeds, you're going to have some failure modes uh, knocking around inside your brain, and you want to be on that frequency. Same thing with high pressure, same thing with high temperature, same thing with high solids percent, those sorts of things. So you have a lot of clues here on the SIS sheet. So this is not a formality. You need this. Uh, one thing that I like to ask my salespeople is, not, not only should you send in the SIS sheet, but if we know it's a failure and the customer is asking for a failure analysis, on the SIS sheet, jot some notes about why is this seal here? Why was it removed from service? Did it fail? If so, tell me what you consider a failure to be. Because everybody's definition is not, is, is not nearly the same. Uh, maybe it was pulled from service on a, on, on a normal preventive maintenance schedule. It's been in, in service for two years and the customer just wants to see if any upgrades or seal changes are required. Okay, so you need to understand what's the objective. Why is this seal here? What am I supposed to do with it? What is the objective? Uh, I encourage you to encourage your salespeople in your territory to add that to the SIS sheet so it's required.